Lord Tremendous here, got another battle report here for you. This is game three of the uh, local game store escalation tournament. This round is 1700 points, and it is I, Lord Tremendous of the Vanguard, versus Gnome Runner. And he's playing his Ratkin. He's got a badass goblin list, too, but he's playing his badass Ratkin list for this tournament, and it is a hell of a fight. Uh, this is an old opponent, good friend, and uh, <laughs> always, always gives me a hell of a challenge. So sit back, relax, and get ready to see how game three goes. Here's my list, and it's changed by about 400 points. I still have my Chieftain, Blackshade. He's on his mount with Brutal and the Staying Stone. I have my Magus, Elizabeth. She's mounted with Thamelis, Drain Life, and an Inspiring Talisman. And then I've got a Magus Conclave with Thamelis, because I like rerolling ones. The rest of my list, I have a Cavern Dweller, and he's just badass. I've got a unit, uh, Mounted Sons of Corgan Regiment Formation with Fury and a uh, Tundra Wolf Troop, and my Reavers, Troop Size, my True Valdezes, with the Blade of Slashing, because I had five extra points. The rest of my army consists of a Blood Sworn Horde, yes, Horde, with Fury and the Brew of Sharpness, because I like hitting on threes, and a Warband Horde, with two-handed weapons and a Crystal Retribution, because I absolutely love this unit. It is so terrifying. That's going to do it for my list. I'm going to post uh, Gnome Runner's list, play some music, feel free to pause whenever you like to see what he took. Alrighty, so the scenario for this one was kill. Uh, basically, we line up across the table from each other and try to murder each other's faces before the other person face murders better than we do. Uh, you gotta have at least 10% of the total cost of the army, so 170 for this one to make it not a draw. And yeah, it is the simplest scenario in the book, and I can't wait to get to it because it's my favorite one. Here's deployment, and for the most part, it's a kill scenario. I'm going in. I don't want to be flanked, so when I see him deploying all of his stuff over on the left flank there, I kind of followed suit uh, with my middle being pretty strong. I've got my cavern dweller and my mounted sons on the left side there. Their, their job is just to go across table and make sure I don't get flanked. They're going to hold my left side there. That's the hope. I got Elizabeth in the middle. She can run over there and offer her inspiring talisman if she needs to, or she can just fire off lightning bolts to her little heart heart's content. Uh, eventually when they engage, she'll move in to do some drain life and keep them in there for a little bit longer. And she's just a magnificent beast and i love her uh in the middle there the dogs remember that's still uh my chieftain blackshade because i forgot his model and i am ashamed uh right next to them is the warband behind them are the reavers they're gonna play clean up when the warband goes boom i've got my conclave on top of the hill because that's where they belong and to the right of them i have my tundra wolf troop and my huge horde of blood sworn again going across gonna kill me some rats until they kill me it's gonna be magnificent Alrighty, so here's top one after movement. I didn't get to go first. The rats did. And the cowardly little bastards hang back. They did come forward a little bit on the right flank there. His big creepy demon thing comes out on the right flank. But uh, for the most part, the left side didn't do anything but reposition a little bit. And yes, the cowardliness of this army sickens me. And so I must punish them all. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking shit to Gnome Runner because I can. <laughs> That's it. Uh, nothing else happens during his turn. So, here's bottom of one after movement. And since I am all that is man, I come thundering forward. I don't care. I ain't scared. We come thundering forward pretty much across the board. I send the dogs forward. I send the uh, warband forward. And I'm just daring something to charge them. I want this to happen. Uh, left side there, the cavern dweller and the mounted sons move up. Mounted sons move all the way up to the obstruction. Elizabeth moves up to the edge of the forest so she can continue to get cover and fire off lightning bolts like it's nobody's business. And that's it for movement. 
I go into the pansy phase, and Elizabeth takes aim and fires a lightning bolt at the, uh, god, war engine looking thing there, and I do a single wound. So, I have struck the first blow, as piddly as it is. Uh, obviously, passes the nerve check, no problem. That takes us to top of two after movement, and all of a sudden the rats are brave again. The big scary troll looking thing, they come flying forward into the warband, and I'm fine with that. They blow up the warband, they blow up the warband, they're going to take damage, and the reavers are going to eat them alive. Wonderful, wonderful. His other big old horde brick of slaves there go up right in front of the dogs, but don't actually charge them. His creepy demon slayer thing goes into the forest, and the rest of his stuff just kind of piles into the left flank, waiting for one of us to blink. Honestly, I think he's just waiting to see what happens in that center and uh that's it for movement in the pansy phase this weird demon thing fires something at my reavers and hits them for three wounds which is a dick move they're perfectly fine and then his little range guy there fires at uh, my chieftain and is able to slip a wound through on him which will be his ending because i'm sending him in he's gotta die there's no two ways about it then his death engine fires at me and does four more wounds, bringing his total up to five. Couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Uh, he's fine. He passes his nerve check. But dear god, five wounds on my chieftain of all things. Not sexy. Pansy phase over. We go into combat. And his big old crazy trolls. They're not trolls, though. They are brutes. They, uh, yeah, they attack and they do seven wounds to my warband, which was a little bit more than I thought they were going to do, uh, but seven wounds won't be enough to break these guys. I look forward to the, the, the counter charge. Warband is perfectly fine, his brutes back up an inch and start questioning their choices in life. Oh, it's going to be good to swing back. With that, we go over here to bottom of two after movement, and I go in. Uh, my mounted sons could see them, and it was a flank, and they could make it, so they charge into the flank of the brutes. The warband does the same thing. The, uh, uh, what's it called? The Bloodsworn and the dogs do the same, and my reavers turn to face this big demon thing, because I don't know what flank this thing's going to charge into, but I'm going to counter charge with the reavers if I can. My conclave, realizing it's way too close, uh, backs up to the side of the hill there, just trying to stay out of this thing's charge range. Elizabeth stays right where she at, because there's no reason to move her, and my, uh, what's it called? Cavern Dweller moves up, daring the spiderling things to charge him uh other than that oh yeah and my uh what's it called chieftain charges into the thing that shot at him last turn hopefully killing it this turn or at least wavering it so it can't shoot uh or i'm sorry disordering it so it can't shoot and uh that's it for movement during the pansy phase my conclave fires at the big demon slayer thing or whatever it's called and does exactly two wounds to it which isn't terrible i, I can't complain about that at all especially considering it had cover two wounds i'll take it demon spawn i'm sorry uh I'm learning the nomenclature. I apologize. Elizabeth lets loose another lightning bolt, doing yet another single wound to, I believe, his weapons team. Uh, not terrible. It's a start, but uh, not enough to break the thing. And then we dive into glorious combat. Blackshade is a little off his A-game right now. Uh, he's able to do, I believe, two wounds to that thing, two or three. Not an entirely impressive amount, but he only has five attacks, so what can you do? And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, it's two wounds, it's two wounds, I apologize. Again, not super impressive, but it's a start, and now the bastard can't shoot next turn. He backs off an inch, because this thing doesn't so much as even waver, and, well, prepares to be countercharged, I guess, next turn? In this combat, we do uh, our attacks and 25 wounds to his brute unit occur. Oh, it was glorious. It was so, so glorious. I was so happy. 25 wounds. I mean, granted, it's 40 attacks from the Mounted Suns and 25 attacks from the Warband. Still, it felt right. It felt right. The unit explodes, and uh, we, the Mounted Suns, just turn around to face the rest of them because something's going to charge them next turn. And the Warband stays right where it's at because, honestly, I'm kind, tr I'm trying to go the Demon Slayer into charging my flank. I figure if it hits them, that's great. And afterwards, uh, he'll bl they'll blow up, he'll take a bunch of damage, and then maybe even the Conclave can take him out. Or the Reavers, whoever. The Bloodsworn and the Tundra Wolves go after the Slaves, or Plague, what are they exactly? Uh, I can't remember. But he goes after the Plague guys, or they, they could be Slaves, let's see. According to his, you know, Shock Troops. No, they're probably not Shock Troops. Uh, what are the Horde 
does he have? It could be Blights. That's what they are. They're the Blight Horde with the Brewer's Strength. We hit them and we do 13 wounds total, as you can see from the dice on top there. Which, hey, that's respectable. 25 from the Blood Sworn, 10 from the, uh, the Thunder Wolves. 13 wounds? I'll take that. I don't know if it's going to be enough to break him, but it's definitely going to be enough to shatter some teeth. I roll pretty high twice and they shatter. They don't have anyone around for rallying right now, so they're just kind of off their own nerve check and they die. So what I do is I turn the Tundra Wolves to the left to face that little character guy, but the Bloodsworn turned to face the Demon Spawn guy. And uh, that was just in case he wants to charge Bloodsworn. I don't have a problem with him killing the or going after the Warband and killing them, but the Bloodsworn, I can't let him get into the rear flank of them. That's just not going to happen. So I sacrifice their, their facing in order to hopefully save the unit. With all the combats resolved, we go over to the top of three after movement, and yeah, yeah, his big old Demon Slayer thing goes slamming into the Blood Sworn. Uh, in his shooting phase area, shooting magic phase, he immediately regrets that. He looks at it and goes, why did I do that? And I was like, well, I, I didn't know what he did. I've never seen one before. So I figured he was some sort of whirling dervish of terror. Turns out, no, he's a typical monster just like everything else with really no hope of charging and breaking the blood sworn in one turn. So we'll see what happens. Uh, on the top there, all of his stuff starts to collapse in on the center, knowing that they've got to get there. I believe they hit uh, Black Shade in the flank with a big old horde brick, which is really bad for him. And then his spider rider things, uh, let's see if I can figure out what they are. Uh, his hack paws, they charge into my cavern dweller. And uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen there, because I'm relatively new to using a cavern dweller. I've used a devourer and a jabberwocky. But uh, the Cavern Dweller is pretty badass, and while he's the most expensive monster, there's a reason for it. He's the bestest monster. So I'm curious if he can take this charge and, and eventually win this fight. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for his movement. During his magic phase, he uses uh, Drain Life, I believe, on the Warband with his little... Uh, little caster guy there and brings up uh it does three wounds to them and i think heals the wounds off of his uh demon spawn thing so well played by my opponent and then his weapon team uh it shoots at my sons because the death engine can't uh i think it's a death engine weapon team and no i think that's it i think just the weapon team shoots at my uh, mounted sons and is able to do four wounds to him which isn't bad considering it's only a breath weapon 10. We jump into combat, and his horde brick of, uh, ooh gosh, what are they, shock troops attack Black Shade right off the bat and get him up to, I think that's a 15, so 15 wounds, and uh, he's only a 15, 17 thanks to the Staying Stone. Uh-oh. <laughs> May have given up my, my chieftain for no good reason. Yeah, Black Shade gets pulverized, and then his unit turns to face uh, the rest of my stuff, because, well, we're coming in in a minute. In combat with my Bloodsworn, his Demon Spawn does nine wounds to this unit. That's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Uh, this thing is a lot scared than I give it credit for. Luckily for me, nine wounds isn't enough to so much as waver this unit, and he would back up an inch, but he can't because he's stuck between my dogs and the Bloodsworn. So more or less, we just kind of stay right there. His hack paws attack my Cavern Dweller and are only able to do two wounds to him. He's a 16-18, so he's probably not going anywhere. Yeah, the hack paws don't do anything to them. They back up an inch and uh, start rethinking their life choices. And that brings us to bottom of three after movement. And it's time for some revenge. So the Bloodsworn go into the demon spawn. And then I realize that the Tundra Wolves are in his rear. Okay, I'll take 30 attacks. <laughs> that was not my plan. That was not what I thought was going to happen. But uh, it worked out. So the Tundra Wolves go into his rear. And I figured they can't hurt. Uh, in the middle there, the Mounted Suns charge into, I want to say the Death Engine, not 100% on that, but it definitely charged into something. Uh, Elizabeth moves up to start working on the War Chief or something that's in there, the little guy next to him. The, uh, Cavern Dweller charges back in, or counter charges the Hack Paws, and the Warband and the Reavers, they're kind of out of position now. They move up as far as they can. They're going to start putting some pressure on them. Uh, that way, when the Mounted Suns die, and let's face it, they're going to, I can counter charge with everything I have left and kill him off uh hopefully finishing off the game that's it for movement though starting off the pansy phase elizabeth fires off drain life on his war chief i think it's a war chief what the hell is he called yep war chief and uh 
does three wounds to him, healing three off the mounted sons, which is huge. And uh, hopefully that helps him stick around for a little bit longer. And then we go into combat. And I know what you're thinking when you look at this combat. You go, hey, that cavern dweller still has two wounds on it. I wonder if Tremendous uh, rolled the regen save. No, no he didn't, because I forgot. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's completely my fault. Anyway, we go into the combat, and out of his 10 attacks or so that he got, he was able to put 5 through on the hack paws. Not terrible. And now that they're disordered, I think they might have had Thunderous Charge. Yeah, they had Thunderous Charge, so that's gone. Now he's got to wound me on 5s. That just made that combat a lot more one-sided. So, I'm feeling confident about this one. This, of course, was just the initial exchange. Uh, I don't even wave room. I back off an inch, and I wait to see what happens next turn. In this combat against his weapons team, uh, my Mounted Sons flub. Or, no, I'm sorry, they don't flub. They do uh, 25? 25 wounds? Something like that? It's uh, it's a little insane. No, they can't do 25 wounds. Not really sure what those indicate, but they do a ton of wounds to this guy. I kill him dead, and then I move up till I'm an inch away from the next guy, just because I, I gotta put him up there. Uh, I know it's gonna happen. I know he's gonna countercharge the hell out of him. All I can do is hope that they hold for a turn. My Blood Sworn Tundra Wolf combo on his Demon Spawn does like over 20 wounds of this guy, or right around. No, no, it's like over 20 wounds. And uh, that was awesome. I think the dogs did more damage than the Blood Sworn, though. The Demon Spawn goes poof, and the, uh, what's called the Blood Sworn turn around to look towards the little uh, whatever character that is. The. I don't know. Blight Lord. Blight Lord. And uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I can get a hold of him next turn and smash his face in. That is all the damage I can do, so here's top of four after movement. And, yeah, his character does his independent move, uh, moves forward, then does a 90 degree pivot, and shoots forward again, uh, getting out of the way so that his big war machine looking thing there, maybe it's the death engine? I really don't know what that thing is. It's gotta be the death engine, or the, uh, maybe it's a war engine? I, I, I really don't know what the hell that thing is. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it comes in, hits me in the flank, and then it's, uh, shock troops charge into the front of my mounted sun, so it's not looking good for the mounted sons at all. Uh, his hack paws counter charge cavern dweller, and his character just kind of make their way around the warband, and that's it for movement. In his pansy phase, he casts a spell, I believe, drain life into my warband, putting three more wounds on him, which makes me nervous. It makes me nervous for a good reason. Uh, he's able to roll out of the box twice and pop the unit. That sucked. That really sucked. We dive into combat and his shock troops, or I'm sorry, yes, yeah, I think they're shock troops, is big airy, or scary elite unit of shock troops with dwarven ale, beat the ever-loving crap out of my mounted sons with the war engine helping out, doing a total of 11 wounds, bringing their total up to 12. Oh, that's not good. I think they're only a 16, 18, so I'm hanging on by, like, fingernails. But then for the biggest upset of the entire game, he rolls snake eyes to break my mounted sons. Snake eyes! Oh my god! <laughs> he backs off an inch, and I survive. Holy crap. That is huge. That is really huge. I still am pretty sure the Mounted Sons are dead, but they get to put some serious hurt on the shock troops now, and that might be all I need. Uh, combat over here. The Hack Paws are able to put three more wounds through on my Cavern Dweller, bringing this total up to five. But it's not enough to so much as waver them. They back off an inch, and I will see them in a turn. That brings us to bottom of four after movement, and I'm going to take what they gave me. My Mounted Sons go into the Shock Troops, my Reavers go into the side of the War Engine, my Bloodsworn go into the Blight Lord, and my Cavern Dweller countercharges the Hack Paws. Elizabeth turns to face the War Chief, and she's going to try to drain life the hell out of him to try to heal up the Mounted Sons. The, uh... Conclave is going to fire at him as well, and the dogs just kind of move up a little bit, or move over to the side so that they can maybe come in there if they're needed. But uh, it's looking pretty good, and that's it for my movement. In the pew phase, my Conclave fires at his uh, war chief, or whatever he's called, and does a single wound to him, which, you know, progress. It brings his total up to four. 
Uh, little dude makes his nerf check no problem. We go straight into combat. So the cavern dweller attacks the hack paws and does five more wounds to him. And if you recall, I remembered he had regen this turn and I healed one. So he's only got four on him. So that brings their to the hack paws total wounds up to 10, I believe. But in a little bit of an upset and because I believe in fair play, I roll snake eyes for their break check. <laughs> So now we're even. He let my mounted sons lived. I let his cavalry live. And now we're even. Now the gloves can come off. So yeah, hack paws are perfectly fine. I back off an inch and hope that the cavern dweller can hold on. My bloodsworn take out their swords and beat the blight lord half to death, doing ten wounds to him. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. The blighted bastard goes poof, and I shoot forward three inches, maybe four, and uh, end up right where you see. Oh, 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 my Reavers. Oh, Valdezes, you crazy bastards. The ten guys in this unit do 20 wounds to the warrant, and granted they doubled their attacks, they had 40, but with Thunderous Charge 2 and Vicious, they are broke. They do 20 wounds to this war engine. It explodes, and my reavers just uh, change facing so that when, uh, well, let's face it, when the Mounted Suns die, <laughs> they can counter charge and hopefully finish them off. Because I'm hoping the Suns do well. Oh, Valdez, you beautiful bastard. My Mounted Suns put out some good wounds. They do eight wounds to his shock troops. It's not going to be enough to break the unit, but it's a hell of a good start. Especially considering that unit shouldn't even be there right now. As predicted, though, the unit is perfectly fine, and I back off an inch to try my luck next turn. Alright, so here's top of five after movement, and his shock troops countercharge my mounted sons, his uh, war chief charges Elizabeth because he can, and his hack paws countercharge cavern dweller. That is it for his movement. We go straight into combat because that's all he's got, and man, he's got a lot of it still. His shock troops are able to do 10 more wounds to my mounted sons, bringing their total up to 22. Unless he rolls snake eyes again, these guys are doomed. Yeah. Yeah, he rolled snake eyes again. <laughs> Oh my god! When he did it twice, we were both like, what is going on in this game? What is happening? He rolls snakes again! And it's because Elizabeth has the inspiring talisman. So, yeah. <laughs> I know! <laughs> uh, the Mountain Suns are just refusing to break this game. So, yeah! He backs off an inch and prepares to pick up his unit. The hack paws do a couple more wounds to my cavern dweller and then back off an inch because they're not even so much as wavering. And then his war chief does three wounds to Elizabeth, which, uh, I can't believe he hit her. Most people don't hit her. He's apparently stunned by it too because after getting hit in the face three times, she's wavered. Yeah, these rats, they're mean, vicious little bastards. So she doesn't have anything that's going to help her get past waivers, so she's just out for a turn. With that, we go over to bottom of five, and what else can I do? I send the Cavern Dweller back into the Hack Paws, the Reavers and the Suns, uh, Mounted Suns go back into the Shock Troops, and everything else just kind of turns the face uh, in the middle there. I'm going to shoot with the Conclave into his War Chief, and that's it for movement. We dive into combat, and again, because I remembered, my, uh, what's called, Cavern Dweller did heal two wounds with regen during the movement phase. Uh, we go into combat, though, and he does four more wounds to the Hack Paws, bringing her total up to 14. And that's finally their tipping point. They, uh, route, and I shift his facing to look towards the center of the game, or center of the table, just in case more craziness happens with nerve checks. In this combat over here, uh, I don't do like an insane amount of wounds or anything like that. I think I bring their total up to 18, which, uh, so in total I do about 10, which isn't great, but uh, I'll take what I can get. It's enough to break the unit though, and so my uh, Reavers, the uh, True Valdez, they fire forward an inch or two, and then my Mounted Sons turn around to look at the War Chief, because I'm gonna kill him if I can. 
Uh, at this point, my opponent looks at the table, looks at his one thing remaining, and goes, you know what? You've got it. I concede the game. So, Because all he had left was a war chief with four wounds on it. He was either going to take out the Mounted Sons or Elizabeth and then get murdered. There really wasn't anything else for him to do. So he just conceded the game. And there it is. There's the end of the game. Uh, I must say, thanks to the Snake Eye rolls and the Mounted Sons' just inability to route this game... <laughs> Uh, all, all is right with the world, and I go into game four as uh, 3-0 and at the top table. I don't know what's happening anymore, but I'm so pleased that it is. Uh, we'll get to the recap right now, because this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. So in the end, it was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I ended up getting my uh, opponent off the table in the bottom of five, top of six, you know, splitting hairs, whatever. I got 1,700 points out of him. He got 425 out of me for a difference of 1,275. Three wins, zero losses, going into the final game, game four of the Escalation Tournament. Feeling pretty good about this right now. I don't know how I got here, but I'm happy that I'm here. <laughs> I must say, I'm really enjoying where I'm taking the army right now. Bloodsworn are incredibly nice. Uh, the amount of attacks they can put out, not to mention the amount of attacks they can withstand at 22-24, they're really something else. And if I didn't need the Staying Stone on my uh, Chieftain, I would toy with the idea of putting it on them to make them like 23-25. Mounted Sons have become my crutch. After this game, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Two snake eye rolls, they were insane. Cavern Dwellers are amazing. Yeah, thank you again for pointing them out to me, guys. They, I, I don't know why I would ever bother with any other monster. Poor Blackshade got murdered. Straight murdered. I'd love to say it was self-sacrifice and all that good stuff, but no. I just got greedy and I wanted that thing to stop shooting at me. And yeah, he took the shock troops to the face and uh, yeah. Poorly used on my part, and uh, I still love him. I still think he's a great unit. I just really misused him this turn, or this game. It was an unusual turn of events, but the dice gods were actually on my team. This game, this tournament, like, I don't know what I did, or what's happening, or what kind of failure they're setting me up for, but uh, I'm going to ride this luck train all the way to the, to the end, see where it takes me. Elizabeth is dangerous. As we know, she was able to hold on against the war chief and everything like that, not to mention the drain life that she's sending out. Really like her kit. She's she's terribly good. The Conclave was useful this game, I'm not gonna lie. Being able to put out some damage and forcing him to pay attention to other things was kinda nice, so I'm still enjoying the Conclave. And overall, I'm really enjoying my list. It's, uh, in my opinion, fit me and my playstyle very well. As you saw, though, this was a very brutal game. It wasn't an easy victory. It wasn't anything that I just walked into and was like, hey, I got this no problem. I really had to earn it, and Snake Eyes rolls is really what gave me the over-the-top win. Had those Snake Eyes not rolled that way, that Shock Troop unit would have probably hurt me pretty bad. Maybe I would have taken it out, but it wouldn't have been as decisive of a victory. Really brutal opponent. No Runner never, never pulls his punches, and that's why I love playing against him. He always presents a really good challenge in both tactics and army, and as always, I'm looking forward to our rematch. And that's going to do it. Battle Report number 27 is officially in the history books. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But as always, thanks.